Mark. All right, welcome back to the Dungeon Pub, everybody. I am your humble bartender, and today we're going to do something very, very fun. We are going to take a look at the first class in the Player's Handbook. This is the Barbarian. Uh, we're going to do a very quick review in light of our previous videos about how to create a character, how to go about it. And this is aimed at those of you who um, have this interesting idea that kind of, you know, looks at the Barbarian class, but you know, maybe you want to know more. So um, this is going to be from the point of view of uh, a lot of the adventures that we've had already. We've had a number of very good Barbarian characters in our party. <laughs> a lot of cool people have had their hand at the Barbarian class. Uh, this is going to be um, just a simple class review. Um, no bias, no nudging, uh, just a straight up uh, information dump. And uh, again, it's going to be based on, uh, you know, experience rather than uh, just number crunching or you know, telling you this is supposed to be this. So, uh, without further ado, the Barbarian. Uh, he, this is the classic, right? I mean, when you think about role-playing games, when you think about Dungeons & Dragons, you know, there's always the Barbarian class. And what is the Barbarian? Well, it's kind of weird. <laughs> because it's easier to tell you what the Barbarian is not, uh, and that way you can kind of figure it out. The Barbarian is not a fighter, okay? There is the fighter class, and it's meant for that specific purpose. Um, the Barbarian is not this versatile, um, you know, all-encompassing uh, fighter guy who's going to stand in the middle, shout orders, and no, 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 no. no. Uh, when you think of a Barbarian, think more of uh, savagery, brutality, uh, people who survive on the edges of civilization. And um, that's kind of the point. Uh, but, you know, when you think about it again, why would it deserve an entire class? Why can't you just make you know, a background like that. Well, because in 5th edition and in editions prior to this, the Barbarian has always been this interesting mix between things. Uh, yeah, he's a brawler, he's a, he's a melee fighter. Uh, yes, he can be very tanky, very uh, very sturdy. Uh, barbarians do survive a lot, of, a lot of punishment, and they can also dish out a lot of it. So that makes them you know, fit into that whole um, mold. Of the uh, of the brawler guy, but they have always been built around this very fun, very interesting mechanic, uh, very uh, risk versus reward type of play, um, and and it kind of it's kind of meant to bring out your inner savagery. Uh, if you have this uh, concept in your mind, um, then um, you know the barbarian is the class for you. If your concept is based on uh, this this brutal guy, this this large, massive guy or girl, because we've had that and that was very fun. Um, who, who's this uh, unkempt, uh, savage, uh, you know, very primal, very uh, very honorable as well, uh, then the Barbarian is the class for you. And where are we going to tip it off? Well, primarily, um, just to kind of get this out of the way, uh, before we get into the meat and potatoes of things, uh, let's look at the statistics. Uh, let's look at ability scores, uh, primarily, and see what you're going to need uh, in order to be um, a good Barbarian. Well... Uh, to tip it off, number one, stat number one, that's going to be strength. Uh, why? Well, because barbarians are all about melee damage. Uh, the rage mechanic, their primary role in combat being the brawler guy, they, they're going to need a lot of strength. Uh, but that, again, could not be uh, your main focus. And uh, here's interesting tip number one. Uh, barbarians kind of divulge into two, um, into two roads. Uh, road number one is the melee brawler guy, but road number two is kind of the melee tanky um, tanky person and uh, the two statistics that are going to be um, essential for either build are going to be strength or constitution you're going to have more of one and um, depending on what your idea is uh, whether you want to just swing a giant axe into somebody's face over and over uh, with a reckless abandon or do you want to be the noble uh, the noble barbarian who uh, you know uh, follows the and the primal paths and you know is in tune with nature then um you kind of see where i'm getting with this um so yeah that was my uh that was my uh tipping point when i first started reading about the class i i read the whole thing in the in the in the player's handbook and i went okay uh you know there, there's two things in there uh so it's very easy um i'm gonna put this out there very 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 quickly uh it's very easy for people to look at the barbarian and go okay uh, barbarian smash uh no uh well yeah but <laughs> that's not the only thing that barbarians can do and given a lot of the uh, equip equipment mechanics a lot of the uh, a lot of the action economy that's in the game right now uh, you can you can do a lot of very very fun stuff uh, and there's a lot of stereotypes that you can put into the barbarian uh, it's not just the the big bearded guy with the large axe and the uh, the leather loincloth if you want to think of it that way uh, it's not just Conan you know there's a lot more in there um, that goes all the way into even Native American um, 
you know, uh, history. So um, now that we have that out of the way, uh, just to simplify, uh, go for strength, uh, go for constitution. Dexterity is important for you, but not as much as, let's say, to a rogue uh, or a ranger or, uh, you know, some of the more uh, quick and uh, and stabby stabby classes. No, no, um, you're not going to need much else, actually. And that's one of the things about the barbarian. Uh, the barbarian class is simple, right? It's, it's approachable. It's easy for you to just sit down. Um, you know, learn a few of the abilities at, you know, level 1, 2, 3, and then just, you know, go wreck some havoc. It's very, very fun. If you're that kind of guy, if your concept for a character is this, then, oh boy, you're in for a lot of fun. So, either uh, strength or constitution is going to be your main stat, uh, then you're going to get some dexterity, uh, maybe wisdom, because it, it's going to tie into a lot of your skills, um, and that's it. Hey, what do you know? Barbarians don't need charisma, they don't need intelligence, especially not intelligence. Because, you know, there are two things that are important to your garden variety barbarian. It's uh, drinking, uh, fighting, and women. Um, so, yeah. Well, that's three, but you kind of get the joke. Anyway, um, what, what, now what? I mean, now you have your ability scores, you have your, um, uh, you have your either strength or constitution. Well, let's see what the barbarian offers. At the very, very first level, uh, the very, very first tier of play, uh, you're going to notice that the first ability, I'm not going to go through the whole class, I'm not going to read all the things, because if you're looking at the Barbarian, you're going to read them yourselves. But then the first thing that you get presented to uh, presented with is, is the Rage ability. It's level 1, and it literally uh, says that it takes you a bonus action to enter a raged, uh, an enraged state. It lasts for 1 minute, which is uh, anywhere between 6 to 10 rounds, depending on how your DM views the, uh, the round mechanic. And what does it do for you? Well, uh, it gives you advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws, uh, which is very important. Uh, it's a utility thing, primarily, because what are the strength checks? Well, everything that derives from the strength uh, ability score. So, you know, athletics, uh, shoving, um, you know, climbing, uh, stuff like that. And you have advantage on those, especially uh, those and the saving throws. Uh, again, so uh, if you ever get to fight a telekinetic guy... <laughs> uh, this is the ability for you. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, what does that mean? Well, it makes you more difficult to push around, makes you more difficult to, um, you know, disarm or uh, or tackle or grapple. You know, you're just an unruly uh, unruly beast. Um, then what it does for you is uh, when you make a melee weapon attack using strength, very important, you gain a bonus to the damage roll that increases as you gain levels uh, as a barbarian. And that's just a flat increase of your melee damage. It's really, really good. Uh, it's... Um, there aren't a lot of mechanics in the game that uh, incre increase the uh, the melee damage flat off the bat, so this is this is very very good. For and then lastly, it gives you uh, resistance to um, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. And you know, just to kind of put them in a group, that's the standard issue uh, melee damage, uh, or rather physical damage that you're gonna receive. I'm saying melee because you know primarily that's where you're gonna be, but. If you get shot at with a with a light crossbow and you take some piercing damage, it's gonna get cut in half. So there you go. Those are three uh, things that you're gonna get while enraged um, for the standard duration. And well, if you look at them that way, there's your defensive ability, there's your offensive ability, meaning you know you take less damage, you do more damage, and some utility. You you're you know uh, you have advantage on everything that is strength. Uh, where's the catch? Well, the catch is that it lasts for a certain amount of time, uh, and if you fail to either deal physical damage or take uh, any kind of damage uh, in your in your turn uh, and your turn ends then your rage ends prematurely and that you know that kind of uh, that's you know when you think about it it's not that bad of a, of a, of a trade-off but then you know there's a lot of things in combat uh, starting off with bad placement and you know bad times to rage and you know ending with a lot of wizard uh, or rather <laughs> a lot of spells uh, that can put you in a very difficult situation and that you know, that can end your rage. And uh, um, the other small trade-off is that you can rage a certain number of times per day. So, you know, if you exceed those, uh, you have to take a rest because, you know, you're going to get tired and you're just not going to have that resource available to you. Um, so that's that's the main thing about the Barbarian. It's right there for you at level 1. And, you know, even not looking at the role-playing um, possibilities because, you know, that's very, very fun. Trust me, we had people scream... In my living room, uh, when they rage for 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 such a long time now, it's just it's just uh, gotten to the point where it's uh, it's you know, part part for the course. Um, it, it, it's great mechanically because it's, it's this great trade off. Uh, it allows you to imagine and to role play these great things. Uh, just land in the middle of you know three five guys rage your uh, your rage your heart out and start swinging that big axe or whatever you feel like. Um, so then at level one, uh, you also get the unarmored defense, and here's where the class starts to become. 
you know, a class of its own. Because what an armored defense gives you is uh, a flat formula that you can use to calculate your AC uh, based off of your uh, dexterity modifier and your constitution modifier plus 10. Um, this is um, there for you while you're not wearing any kind of armor, but shields are okay. So what does that mean? Well, that means that, again, barbarians are not fighters. You're not a knight. You're not, you're not a guy who, you know, needs all these tools of the trade in order to be effective. No, you're a force of nature. So, I don't know, your, your height is tough. Your, uh, you know, your reflexes are very quick. And um, here's the thing, though, you can still use a shield. So, uh, you know, a lot of the times, this is coming from experience, a lot of times when people in our group have built barbarians, they either go for the uh, for the two-handed or or dual wielding and nobody ever ever used the shield uh, so this is this is kind of cool in my opinion when you imagine the barbarian you know having zero armor some straps of leather and this, this giant axe in one hand and a shield in the other it just um you know gets my imagination going but this well, what does this mean for your character well to put it bluntly you can be a tank uh you're gonna be a very very sticky very very powerful melee guy and you are in a league of your own. Uh, that combined with the fact that if you you know go a little bit uh, back uh, in the book, you're going to notice that the hit dice for a barbarian is a d12. Uh, and that's the only class in the game that has that available. That means that you are a class of your own. You are this unique battle machine that you know just doesn't need armor. Kind of like a monk, but minus the, uh, you know, the stupid finesse and, and all those martial arts. You don't need that. You just need... You know your axe and you know your rage so that's it at a level one and you know even at this point you can shoehorn in so many characters so many stereotypes out there uh, into this little neat little package that is just uncanny that's the reason why i love the barbarian it's so simplistic uh, it's so direct and it doesn't need you know all this all this prep and all this uh you know uh running about just to kind of get it going no no you just you know put a few th put a few things on your character sheet uh, you know, get a barbarian class and just, you know, go smash some heads. Uh, to those of you that this really appeals to, power to you. This is amazing. And I've seen uh, different people, uh, people who don't have this disposition, disposition, as well as people who have it, have a lot of fun with this. Um, but again, uh, we're going to discuss um, these things a little bit later in the video. Um, level 2, what do you get? Well, uh, starting at level 2, uh, you can throw aside all concern for defense uh, to attack with fierce desperation. This is the reckless attack. Um, ability and what it does is you can um, you can use it at any time uh, as long as it's your turn and the next attack uh, that you make or two uh, when you get to fifth level you're gonna attack twice uh, you attack with advantage but uh, until the beginning of your next turn you know all, uh, all attacks that are coming at you are with advantage as well so again this kind of plays into the rage mechanic but this just you know gives it a, gives it an edge and it just flashes it out it tells you you know this is risk versus reward uh, pick your fights pick your battles and, uh, you know, if, if things get, uh, you know, really, really tough, then, you know, wage all of your uh, might behind this one blow, you know, smash your enemy and see what happens. Um, this is going to be the backbone of the Barbarian class, especially one of the subclasses. But um, I think this is, you know, a unique thing. Uh, it ties into a lot of other things in the game, uh, especially with uh, given um, race options and, and uh, even backgrounds. And then um, at level two, you also get danger sense, uh, which um, literally states that you know you kind of you can kind of smell it in the air when things are not as supposed to be. You know, birds are too quiet. Uh, you know, the air just doesn't smell the way it has to. So uh, what it gives you is advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects that you can see. Very important, such as traps, spells, and uh, in order to get this benefit, you cannot be blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. So as long as you have your faculties, uh, you can see what's coming at you. You have advantage to dodge out of the way and at level two this is a very powerful ability this is very good it means you can stay right there in the front of the party you can be the party's uh, leader maybe not the party's face leave that to the bard but uh you can lead them straight into glorious combat and that is um, you know your primary role anyway uh, and then at level three you're gonna pick a primal path and this is where things start to get very 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 fun uh there are two paths available right now in the book uh that we are gonna discuss um there are others maybe out there there's even homebrew but uh, we're going to be discussing the straight-up player's handbook, uh, just so that we kind of uh, you know keep it simple. But you know, what are the two paths? Well, you have the path of the berserker and uh, the path of the totem warrior, and we're going to take a look at each of them. But um, let's just finish up the abilities first, and then we're going to see how everything ties up together. Uh, ability score improvements. Um, we're going to be discussing these for the first time in this video. But what they uh, mean is that this is a standard linear progression 
Uh, different classes have a different number of them. For the Barbarian, it's the standard uh, 5. So when you reach level 4, 8, 12, 16, and 19, you can either uh, increase one of your ability scores by 2 points, and those are not modifiers, those are you know flat points. Um, you can increase two of them by 1, or uh, you can pick a feat. And we're going to get into feats a little bit later. Uh, we're going to be doing this for every, every class, so by the end of this is, uh, series, you're going to be uh, pretty good with feats yourself. And... Um, this is at level 4, uh, then at level 5 uh, you get to attack twice. And what does that mean? Well, all martial classes in the game, uh, including some that are not martial classes, but kind of do it anyway, like the combat bard, um, they get to attack um, twice per attack action. And what does that what does that mean? Well, you, you pick your, uh, your attack action and you can roll two separate uh, d20s to make an attack. You can do this in between movement uh, and some of these even trigger bonus actions. So this is great for a martial class. It's even... Um, more important for the Barbarian because you don't have maneuvers like the fighter. You don't have all these, uh, you know, nifty things that you can do on the battlefield. So these are very important to you because you're going to have to uh, really make them count. You're going to really look for your advantage in combat. And again, if only you had a way to <laughs> get advantage right off the bat. Well, you do, but again, risk versus reward. So these extra attacks are going to be key to your character and then at level 5, you also get this uh, fast movement thing. Uh, what does it do? Well, very simplistic. Increases your you know movement speed by 10 feet while you aren't wearing heavy armor. So what does that tell you? Well, again, the, the class really, really pushes you into not wearing armor. Um, yeah, sure, get that shield, get those spears, but don't, don't get the heavy armor because those are for fighters and for paladins. You know, stick to your uh, unarmored ways and just be feral, my friend. And speaking of feral... At level 7, uh, you're going to notice that we're skipping level 6 uh, because obviously bonuses for level 6 are going to come from your path. Uh, they're not going to be from the main barbarian tree. At level 7, you get the feral instincts um, ability. Uh, what it gives you is uh, heightened instincts and they're so honed that you have advantage on initiative rolls. But why is that important? Well, because, I mean, think of your previous ability, you know, fast movement increases your movement speed by 10, and there are going to be others that increase your movement speed. It's important because the Barbarian, unlike the Paladin, unlike the Fighter, is mobile, right? And, you know, this is more uh, into, you know, Rogue, this is more into uh, Monk territory, but then again, you're still 300 pounds of Raging Flesh. So, this is where the Barbarian, again, kind of comes into his own thing, because you get to go first mostly uh, or, or you're gonna be up there when the uh, initiative gets rolled and um, that means that you you're first to fight you, you just you know ram into the uh, front lines of the enemy and you raid your uh, tiny little heart out and you start hacking away that's the barbarian this makes it easier for you and uh, the ability has a second uh, a second paragraph it says additionally if you are surprised at the beginning of combat and you aren't incapacitated you can act normally on your first turn but only if you enter your rage before doing anything else on that turn behold right this is the one of the only if not the only ways to beat a surprise round and this is amazing right the barbarian is just so honed he's so twitchy that not even assassination attempts and you know enemy ambushes can get you you know off your game if you of course spend your uh, one of your rages so again kind of ties into that whole risk versus reward thing and i think it's very very great uh, because it, it, it allows your, uh, your, you know, it allows the player, the, the guy who's behind the barbarian character, to really, really feel unique. Because uh, your rogue is going to be standing there, and your fighter is going to be standing there, your wizard is going to be thinking, oh shit, man, what do I do now? But you, you're, you're, you're going to be able to move around, and you know, you can kind of shove people out of the way. You can, you know, go straight at the enemy, prevent them from doing anything brutal. So there you go, man. You can be, again, uh, the noble savage. And that's 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 amazing. Uh, I've seen it happen in game, and it really got my heart beating. Um, level nine again. Notice we're skipping one level. That is due to the ability score improvements, because you know level eight you're going to be able to, you know, either up your abilities or pick a feat. But at level nine you get brutal critical, and this is where it starts to get eh, kind of weird. Because beginning at nine level you can roll one additional weapon damage die when determining the extra damage for a critical hit with a melee attack, and this. Increases to two additional dice at level 13 and three additional dice at 17th level. It's great when it happens, but the Barbarian, I'm going to spoil it for you right now, uh, basically has no other mechanic in terms of criticals. So, you know, you're not going to get more of them because of something. You're not going to get, uh, you know, um, situations where they're certain, kind of like, you know, some assassins. 
that we're going to discuss in later videos. So this is great when it happens. It, it kind of gives you this brutal, you know, powerful feeling when it does happen. But, you know, you're going to be praying for those maybe at some point. So this is kind of eh, but it's there for you and it's fun when it happens. Level uh, 11. And again, we're skipping one level. This is because at level 10, you're going to get a bonus from your chosen path. Uh, level 11. Uh, relentless rage and uh, what this does for you is your rage can keep you fighting despite grievous wounds if you drop to zero hit points while you're raging and don't die outright you know that die outright go to your dm ask him about that and you know if he's too quick to answer then eh, kind of careful uh you can make a dc 10 constitution saving throw if you succeed you drop to one hit point instead each time you use this feature after the first the dc increases by five when you finish a short or long rest, the DC resets to 10. So this is literally a way for you to not die. And however you look at it, despite of, you know, <laughs> what you may be thinking right now, like, oh God, if I ever get to that point, well, maybe it's pointless. You're not dead. So take it. Trust me, it's good. Um, next ability, Persistent Rage, comes at level 15. And that is because, you know, again, kind of get the point. Uh, beginning at 15th level, your rage is so fierce that it ends early. Only if you fail, fall unconscious or if you choose to end it. Bing bong. Well, that literally means that once you enter rage, that's it, my friend. You're either going to die uh, or, uh, you know, you're going to choose to end it. Why you would want to do that, that's... Maybe there would be a situation, but I haven't seen it happen. Uh, so all of that jazz where you have to land an attack, but, you know, either you die or you have to get hurt, that goes out the window. Uh, level 18, uh, Indomitable Might. Beginning at 18th level, uh, if you're total for a strength check is less than your strength score you can use that score in place of the total this is a unique thing okay there is no other mechanic in the game like this and that literally means that if you have 19 strength at this point or or 17 and you need to do an athletics check you're maybe even not raging uh, and if you roll a 16 you can use the 17 right uh, if you have 17 strength let's say you have 17 you roll the dice and you roll the two no, 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 it's a 17. So that's that's amazing, that's kind of cool. That means that you can never fall below a certain line unless, again, you roll a one. Uh, but then again, a lot of things, you know, in the game are strength checks and while you're raging, you have advantage on those. Uh, and there are other mechanics that give you advantage on those. So even the one rolls are not gonna be that bad. So there you go, this is, you know, again, barbarian amazingness. Uh, and then primal champion at level 20, uh, you embody the power of the wilds. Duh, you've been doing that for 20 levels now, about fucking time. Your strength and constitution scores increase by 4, and your maximum for those scores is now 24. Oh god. Well, again, this is unique for the Barbarian. Uh, in 5th edition, where I'm gonna say it right now, uh, it's actually, for a lot of classes, for a lot of builds, especially in the beginning, uh, it's it's better to stick with one class for 20 levels than multi-class. Um, I've done some math, but I'm not good with math, or at least not that good. But uh, based on what I've seen, uh, characters that go into one class all the way are just more uh more in tune uh, they're more versatile and uh they get to reach certain things like primal champion again rangers sorry guys i mean your level 20 stuff is eh, but the barbarian oh yeah you are blessed with this amazingness and uh you know playing at level 20 is kind of different than playing at level 10 or or two uh, obviously i mean i'm sorry if i'm not giving you any news but this is just unique this is great uh there are other ways that you can increase your scores past the 20 cap uh but those are items that your dm is gonna have to prepare and give out uh maybe he's in <laughs> maybe he wants to maybe not but this is gonna happen you know if you ever get to level 20 i really hope you do because that means you've had a great campaign so those are the standard things that you're gonna get as a barbarian and now let's look at the uh, primal paths. Uh, your first primal path is going to be open to you at level 3. That's the path of the Berserker. I mean, what comes to mind when you hear that, right? It, it's, it's not going to surprise you or wow you in any way. These are, uh, I mean, the whole path is just one giant compilation of, of abilities that are going to make your melee life very, very fun and the melee life for your targets and enemies is not so fun. So, uh, starting off, at level 3, you get the Frenzy ability, uh, which uh, literally states that you can go into a Frenzy when you rage. So that means you have to trigger the rage in order for this to become available to you. If you do so, uh, for the duration of your rage, you can make a single melee weapon attack as a bonus action on each of your turns after this one. Well, kind of takes you a little bit of time to get into the swing of things, literally what it means. But, you know, turn number 1. Uh, you know, you've rolled initiative, maybe you have advantage, maybe not, maybe this is earlier, maybe this is literally at level 3. 
you use your bonus action to rage, and then you rush forward and use your action to attack. Uh, then, you know, everybody else gets a turn, and then when it's your turn again, you can attack with your action. Maybe you can attack twice if this is at level 5. But then, with your bonus action, which you're not using for anything else, you can do another weapon attack with your main hand or main weapon. And that is just brutal. That's just amazing. Um, it just literally means more dice, more opportunities for you to crit. Again, you know, going back to that crit mechanic. But um, it comes at the expense of one round to kind of get it going. Trust me, not that bad. This is really, really great if swinging an axe to somebody's face really makes you smile and makes your day happy. Uh, there's one last line into this ability. It says, when your rage ends, uh, you suffer one level of exhaustion, as described in Appendix A. Uh, ask your DM about exhaustion. Uh, some DMs don't use it the same way. I personally like it because it's a great way to, you know, kind of have these physical things into the game. Uh, exhaustion at the initial levels, not that bad. When you start to get rolling, really, really bad. So, you know, maybe you have a cleric or a bard in your party, they can do some restoration for you. That's great. If not, really be careful because this can ruin your day really, really quickly. And this is, again, this is that same mechanic that we've been discussing throughout this video. This is the um, uh, risk versus reward. And it's fun. It's really, really, really fun. You get to be... Uh, you know, if you do it at the right time, uh, maybe your party's about to wipe, you know, everybody's like, oh god, what are we gonna do? And then in comes the barbarian, pops a frenzy, uh, crushes a lot of people, uh, you know, everybody gets to survive, you know, kumbaya, everybody's happy, but then, you know, uh, you're in the middle of this adventure, maybe you're in a bad spot, and you get to suffer one level of exhaustion. If you have nobody to fix it for you, you're gonna be pretty much crippled for the next fight. So, again, this is great D&D right there, and this is just the beginning of your class. Uh, level 6, Mindless Rage. Uh, beginning at 6th level, you can't be charmed or frightened while raging. This is very important. And if you are charmed or frightened, when you enter your rage, the effect is suspended for the duration of the rage. So, two things. Um, two things that, you know, potentially could ruin your fun. Number one, they don't end, right? They are simply suspended. So, if you get Giast, for example, ask your DM about that. If he smirks and doesn't tell you nothing, warning. <laughs> um, they don't get uh, ended right there on the spot so if you have a, an effect that is a charm or uh, or a fear on you that is gonna last for 10 minutes and you rage and you know your rage only lasts for one then you know, kind of get the point um the other important thing is that um uh, being frightened or charmed is usually due to some spell and uh, the fact that you can't be charmed or frightened while raging means that uh, a lot of those times, and this is at level 6, this is not at level 11 when you get to Relentless Rage, or rather level 15 for Persistent Rage. Uh, this is at level 6, so that means that those two potential uh, conditions that can end your rage now are no longer that important. So this is very good for sustaining your rage, which is important for the Berserker class, and uh, it'll, just, it'll just keep you swinging with all those bonus damages, it's just great. Uh, level 10, Intimidating Presence. Beginning at 10th level, uh, you can use your action to frighten someone with your menacing presence like you would need an ability for that right uh, when you do so choose one creature that you can see within 30 feet of you if the creature can see or hear you it must succeed in a wisdom saving throw yada 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 or be frightened of you until the end of your next turn or on subsequent turns you can use your action to extend the duration of this effect on the frightened target well yeah it's a fear effect and it's great for taking one guy you know out of the fight but it's by far not the best that you can do especially when we're gonna go into um, Totem Warrior, uh, but this is just, uh, it's 50% it's fluff, right? Uh, but it, the other 50% can really do something for you at some point uh, in time. I'm not sure about this one. Really, uh, uh, given your ability at level 3, this is meh, but uh, it's there for you and, you know, it's an open possibility if you really, really want to use it. Um, it gives the creature a potential saving throw, um, and if the creature makes the saving throw, you cannot use this feature on that creature again for 24 hours. But again, based on the combat mechanics, that's 90% irrelevant. So, uh, going forward, level 14, you get Retaliation. And it states that at level 14, when you take damage from a creature that is within 5 feet of you, so melee range, or, you know, uh, 5 feet, because somebody can melee you from 10, you know, those are mechanics that you know, we're going to be discussing later on, you can use your reaction to make a melee weapon attack against that creature. So swing, 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 swing with your bonus action, swing with your reaction, swing with your action, swing with your free actions even. Like, this is literally what the Berserker is all about. It's really, really um, canon, right? It's really fluffy. Uh, it All of the mechanics uh, play into this role of this menacing giant 
beast of a man who swings this powerful weapon at people's faces. And this is just a capstone for it. Uh, I think it's great. Uh, if you're really into that, then go nuts, my friend. I've seen people do this. They've had a lot of fun with it. I didn't have a lot of fun because it just kept, you know, beating all my, <laughs> all my filler uh, NPCs. But there you go. That's the point.